All right, we're rolling in. There's Hustler. And I, I might be a little bit behind. So excuse me while I vlog and park because I am a little late. Stream starts in a couple minutes. I just don't have an excuse. I mean, I'm just a little late. That's all it is. But um, welcome to the vlog. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. And we are about to get underway on stream. Don't know how to park and drive while vlogging. It's a little difficult. I think uh, I'm going to go with no hat today. Probably no sunglasses as well. All right, guys. Um, we're going to get started. We're playing the anti-game today. Uh, stream number two of, well, three streams. So we got today and tomorrow left to play. And we're playing the anti-game. So it's going to be $25 every single hand. Kind of like a short deck format. And we're going to try it out. It's my second time playing this format. Very, very fun. Very, very different. And uh, let's rock and roll. I'm late. Get down my car. Let's get to Hustler and get some chips and start playing. Here at the anti game, we're starting things off first to act, and I decided to limp. I don't know how to play this game. It's one of my first times with this format, and there's a bunch of limps over to Luda, who I'm told is quite aggressive, and he lives up to the name by raising it up to $600. Here, back to me, my hand doesn't ever really want to fold, but I definitely don't want to call here out of position with 15 players left behind to act. So I take the aggressive route and limp raise to 2400 Action folds back to Chris, and he is definitely not one to give up by making it $5,000. Oh man, what have I gotten myself into here this time? Well, look, I've arrived at this spot. I've given Luda respect for being aggressive and raising, and it's time to give him even more respect by shoving and hoping that he can fold some of his nonsense hands that he's four bet bluffing with. So I announce all in. It's very daunting, very scary, because, you know, if he has aces or kings, this is a massive, massive punt. Even ace-king, this is a massive punt. But luckily, I fade a snap call. And phew, when you're all in for $25,000 as a bluff, you definitely don't want a snap call here. Now it's time to wait and sweat things out. And when Chris finally takes his time, I'm praying for a fold and eventually finds the fold with the ace-10 unsuited. Man, it seems really hard to get this guy to fold even for 25k. He took over a minute to let his cards go, but this is a very great start to the stream. And of course, I have to show the hand because we're playing the stand-up game as well. So he knows that I really tried to bluff him here for 25k. And the next spot, I pick up ace-queen offsuit from early position once again. Here, unsure how to play with early positions. JT calls on my right. I call. Then a flurry of calls happen. And once again, back to all reliable Luda. He couldn't help himself and ends up raising things up to $600. JT makes the call, and it's time to spring the trap once again. This time, a much, much better hand than King-10. I make it $3,600, and quickly, everyone folds back to Chris. As he makes the call, JT ends up folding, and we're going to go heads up to a flop this time of Jack-9-6 to hearts. Sitting with the Ace of Hearts, it's quite a relevant card on a flop that I actually don't love to see, to be honest. I think he's going to have a lot of jacks here, a lot of combo draws, and stuff like that. So a little bit in between of what I wanted to do, I decided to go with a larger bet of about half pot. Throw $4,000 into the middle, and here you can see Chris is never folding his hand. He makes the call, which does ring some alarm bells in my head now. We're going to a turn, which is an 8. Very interesting card as it gives me a straight draw. But I didn't think this card was good enough to bet again. So I check it over to Chris and slow down. And then he fires out $5,000. I think about this decision for a good while. And I think about all the options I have. I could call, I could raise, I can fold. I think all of them have lots of merit. And I ended up landing on just a call. Seems like a pretty good price to see a river where I have a straight draw, I have two over cards, and maybe I can bluff at a heart run out. So going to a river, which is the three of diamonds. This is... Not the card I want to see. Complete brick here, and I'm going to check it over to him one more time. And he fires out a very convincing $9,000 bet. And, well, at this point, I don't think I have much of a decision to do. Uh, I could maybe bluff, but that doesn't make much sense. So I just fold uh, and let this one go and give up. Lose a chunky one after a solid start. I give Luda some of his money back. This video is brought to you by WPT Global, and conveniently, I'm actually wearing the uh, WPT Global inspired luck box today, which is a uh, very convenient timing. Anyways, if you're in a location that WPT Global can serve, then you've probably heard of this, but this is literally the best place for you to play online poker, I think. Softest games, friendly environment, and uh, there's just like plenty of stakes 
and games available. So uh, let's go check it out and hop into this right now to show you guys the feature and software. This is a random Wednesday night and we see there are plenty of games from the mid stakes level here with open seats. These are all the fill tables that don't have any open seats here. Then you go to the lower stakes, plenty of open seats here as well. And just like a bunch of these games. I mean, these are all in Chinese Yuan right now. So divide everything by seven. And those are the stakes that are being played. But uh, just infinite tables open on a random Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Anyways, then these are the micro stakes. Lots of options for you guys to hop into as well. Like literally this, this list goes on and on and on. On top of that, there are a bunch of tournaments that are running. This is my favorite part of the site, to be honest with you now, because, you know, I love my tournaments. Literally, around the clock, there's very friendly, like $20 to $100 buy-ins. And, of course, there are some WPT World Championship satellites going on where you can just hop in for $22 and ladder your way up into a 1K seat here in Vegas. So, hopefully, I see you guys here. Take advantage of all of the tournaments going on. Use the code RAMPAGE down in the link in the description below. There's a very special promo for the month of November where anyone new that signs up and deposits over 100 bucks gets an extra $50 immediately added into their account on top of their normal $1,200 deposit bonus. So you deposit 1,200 bucks, you get $50 immediately, and you get $1,200 as you keep playing and uh, you get the bonus. So it uh, seems like a win-win. Click the link in the description below if you're interested in joining. And let's get back into the video and let's try to crush these guys. Next hand, I pick up aces, baby. Let's freaking go. But sadly, once again, I'm in early position. So I decided to do one of those sneaky limp in things. If I'm going to limp with bad hands, I better limp with some really good hands. And well, disaster happens because everyone limps and Luda did not bail me out with a raise. So we're going to go 24 ways to a flop, which comes 10, 8, 4, 2 spades. Here, 24 people on this flop. I'm going to check. Mike throws out a bet of $400. A few players make the call of $400. Then back to me. And yeah, I, I th there's no way. All right. There's nothing I can do. There's no way I'm ever going to just call for $400. I'm going to bump things up and check raise to a size of $2,000. Here, playing a bloated pot out of position, multi-way, all the things you don't want to see. But this 2K check raise ends up getting multiple callers, Mike and Francisco. So when I get two callers, I'm a little bit scared, but we're going to a turn which comes a jack. This doesn't make me feel very good. It's a much more connected card, and since we're multi-way, I just can't imagine one pair being very good in this spot, especially when lots of two pair and straight combos get there. So I check it to my opponents. Mike checks, and then Francisco decides to bomb it for $8,000. Oh my goodness. And here at this point, I have convinced myself that Francisco would really not be bluffing a whole lot into two players, especially after a check raise. So... Yeah, sitting with one pair, it is aces, but I just don't believe one pair is good at this point. So I let my cards go, because also I still have Mike behind me, who could also have a good hand. Make a very tight fold with aces. Mike ends up folding as well, and the stand-up game's on, so I get shown immediately the very bad news. Sick bluff by Francisco with the flush draw. <sighs> that is unfortunate to make the wrong fold with aces. What a shame. Just let me know in the comments below what you think about this play, this hand, and please do your best to roast me on this one. After a disastrous hand there, let's go over another one. Here, Jay Boogs raises it up to 300, and I decided to spice things up with another raise on the button with 10-9 offsuit to 1400. Maybe I'm tilting. Maybe, maybe right after folding aces incorrectly, I'm, I'm a little bit steaming, but here we go. I make it 1400. Francisco wants to own my soul again. He makes the call and Jay Boos calls as well. So three ways to a flop of King Jack 10 rainbow. Action checks to me. And here I think this is just an amazing, lovely, lovely board to see. Should be much better for me as a three better. And I also have a straight draw to go along with my pair. I make it $1,800 when action checks it over to me. Francisco gets out of the way and Jay Boogs ends up making the call. So trying to get him off of it. If only I knew what the cards were, as you can see on the graphics, it's going to be hard to get him off of this one. The turn is the five of clubs, a complete brick. And my opponent checks one more time here. I am going to size up. I'm not going to take my foot off the brakes here. I just think this board is really, really good for me. And I size up to $6,000, basically planning to be all in on the river here. Uh, not going to let this one go. And Jay Boogs thinks about it for a long while. And then it gets to the point during his tank that I don't think he's folding. 
And he ends up going all in himself. Oh my goodness, that is that is too bad for me. I'm going to let this one go and fold. Got to give up on my bluff here. Very ill-timed bluff. Folding aces incorrectly, now bluffing into a set. One mistake compounding into another one. A very, very bad sequence of hands here, but got to bounce back in this next spot, please. A few limps over to me and look down at the premium queen seven suited. Naturally, I will raise this up to $600 because there's a, I don't know. I think I'm still tilted from those past two decisions. Anyways, we're going to go with four callers around to a flop. So we've got to navigate this one five ways into the flop with a premium queen seven. The flop is jack, jack, deuce. This is not really much of anything, but Francisco ends up leading for $300, a very small amount. Luda ends up making the call, and I'm just so suspicious of what's going on here. I just can't imagine Francisco having a very strong hand by leading for such a small amount, and I can't imagine Chris is going to have a strong hand either by just calling this very small amount. So I'm going to gamble, and I'm going to get after it because I raise it up to $1,300. Francisco... Well, isn't one to give up because he calls for 1300 and Chris ends up folding. So here, let's try my best to bluff him off. The turn comes a jack. Okay, that is not a bad card because all of my strongest hands will turn into full houses. And now it's going to be very, very unlikely that my opponent has quads in this spot. So when my opponent checks over to me, I am so never giving up, and I'm going to blast out $3,000. I'm hoping it gets the job done here, but it does not, because Francisco is not going to be folding to me anytime soon. Because he makes the call, sticky one here, this fella. The river is a three, inconsequential, and doesn't change a single thing I'm doing. I raise the queen seven premium, I'm going to represent a premium, and when Francisco checks for a second time here on the river, can he fold a full house? let's just try. I think I can try to make a pocket pair, fold, and, let, and give up here. And only one can hope because I fire out $11,000 and Francisco is in the tank. Look, he's been sticky on the flop, sticky on the turn. Can we get him off of his pair on the river? It's clearly not a jack. Come on, Francisco, you can let it go. No, he calls. Max Payne, and I see he has pocket sixes. That is just really unfortunate and just like that i am now down twenty five thousand dollars after this hand took place the stream has come to an end i am taking an l here on stream but at least i have a little bit of an opportunity to make some money back post stream we've got to do some battle we've got a lot of work to do post stream we go there's a 100 dollars straddle here and i pick up ace king off suit there's an early position limp and the player to my right raises to 500 dollars here with a premium, finally picking up some good hands here post stream. I make it $2,000 and my opponent to my right makes the call. So going to a flop of 933 rainbow, he checks it over to me here. And well, I'm going to fire 1100 bucks because I think this is a good flop for me. All things considered, maybe I can get a fold, maybe you can deny equity. Anyways, he calls for 1100 and we're going to see a turn which comes another three. Here, trips on the board, my opponent checks over to me here, and if I had like aces, kings, queens, all that fun stuff, I would certainly be betting again. Also, I feel like there's a chance I can get called by worse ace highs, so ace king is kind of a borderline in between hand. Here, I decided to throw out 2200 bucks, and my opponent once again makes the call, so definitely not feeling good about it. It's a little bit ambitious. I don't think I can get much more value on the river here, unless it's the, uh, it's a deuce. Not an ace, not a king, little good old deuce. And action is going to quickly go check, check, as I'm just going to go to showdown here on this river card. And my opponent shows pocket tens. Nice. The, the losing train rolls on, unfortunately. But we're moving on with ace king once again. This time I'm in the cutoff and there's a raise to 300. The button three bets to 1000 here. We're playing 2550, by the way. And then small blind folds. I have ace king and I'm going to four bet it here pre-flop to $3,000. Here the button is the only player to make the call. And we're going to a flop of 10, 4, 3 rainbow. Okay, once again, brick city with my ace king. But uh, here definitely going to blast away because what else can I do? I make it $4,000. I throw $4,000 to start off. Pretty large bet here on 10, 4, 3. And my opponent ends up making the call. Oh my goodness. Can I please hit turn king of spades? Finally, top pair, a pair. 
it's it it feels really really good here unfortunately it was post stream but here we are gotta bet for some value now finally when i get there and i throw out ten thousand dollars Pot's going to get really big if my opponent makes the call and he thinks about his decision for a while and ends up raising me. Oh my god, the pot is going to get bigger, isn't it? He makes it $22,000. And now I feel all sorts of weird and awkward. A very, very small raise. It feels very, very value heavy. And my opponent only has like $25,000 behind in his stack too. So re-raising here isn't necessarily an awful play, but it doesn't feel comfortable. Um, anything that I do actually doesn't feel comfortable, but I know folding seems really wrong. So I just make the call for $12,000 more. And I don't know what my opponent's up to, but we're going to go to a river which comes in ace. Well... If I was looking for an excuse to fold on this hand, rivering top two pair is not going to be one of them. I check it over to my opponent, hoping he doesn't have queen jack, I guess, or a set of tens, who who really knows. And he has about $25,000 behind, like I said, and I think I'm hoping for an all-in. I'm not entirely sure, but he ends up checking this one back, showing ace-queen. Oh my goodness. I show the ace-king, and I'm going to win this one. Very, very large pot going getting shipped my way here. But man... No bet for my opponent after rivering top pair. Uh, I feel like I should have made more of this hand somehow, but still happy to take down the pot. One of the biggest pots I've played today, and it's going to be a good one before the very next shuffle. Strap in your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, because I pick up three deuce of spades on the $100 straddle. Cutoff raises the 300. Two players make the call. Why not? Let's flick in another chip in there. I call as well, and we see a flop of all spades. That's right. I have the nut low flush <laughs> three deuce of spades all spades let's freaking go action's gonna check to the cutoff player who makes it four hundred dollars two players end up folding who called his 300 originally back onto me with the flush i'm not slow playing no chance in hell i check raise to fifteen hundred dollars here ready to play a really big pot because well i've got a flush and that's gonna be good enough for me anyways my opponent makes the call for eleven hundred dollars more and the turn comes a brick okay look bricks are really good to see because now i get to blast as long as i didn't see a spade i'm gonna be stacking off here and I throw out $4,000 into the middle, and oh my goodness, he is not going to be folding. He wants to stack off himself, and he makes it $12,000. He's got about $14,000 behind, give or take, $12,000 behind. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not really doing the math in my head. All I know is that I'm sticking the rest of his stack all in. I'm all in here, and he snap calls with pocket aces, but he has a spade, so definitely drawing very, very live. We agree to run it twice, and come on, dealer, let's hold. Oh my goodness, we hold twice, back to back against the same opponent. Unfortunate for my opponent here. <sighs> what can you do with aces with a spade? And uh, yeah, I guess I'm just really lucky that my opponent didn't hit a spade on the, any of the rivers or else that would have been very disastrous for us. But man, I had a very tough day on the stream, but after the stream looked like I picked up some heat, running pretty hot, getting pretty lucky, playing the three deuce and hitting a flush on the flop and to cooler the best hand in poker. Kind of funny here. Uh, it's actually the worst hand in poker, the three deuce, cracking the best hand in poker, aces. It's always nice to be a luck box here. Anyways, we're going to go to the very last hand of this session. So strap in your seatbelt because fireworks happen. There's a $100 straddle on and I'm in the small blind. There are two players who limp and I pick up pocket kings. Yes, everyone, pocket kings. The sun is shining on me here and I make it $500. The cutoff player who originally limped, he does something interesting and limp raises to $3,500, a massive, massive limp raise. And my opponent has maybe $50,000, $55,000 in his stack. So when action folds to me, I think this is obviously like music to my ears because kings is like, you know, one of the best hands in poker, and someone made it really large. So I'm going to re-raise once again. Uh, assuming my opponent could have a really strong hand, I raise to 11,000. And here, my opponent goes into the tank. I'm 
Not sure what's happening at this point. You know, uh, I'm in uncharted territory facing a limp raise. Now I actually have a strong enough hand to re-raise that limp raise. Very, very strange dynamics here. But then my opponent goes all in. He announces all in snap call. Holy crap. All of a sudden we are playing a one over a $100,000 pot, $110,000, $120,000 pot. And oh my God, I show my hand immediately because it's kings. Assuming my hand is good. On the off chance, if it's not good, then I'm going to hate my life. And I ask my opponent, are we going to run it once or twice? Most of the time, I will always allow my opponents to choose how many times we want to run it because it makes no difference to me. And my opponent says twice and then changes his mind before the dealer actually runs it out and says one time. Oh, my God. That is so nerve wracking because at least twice I am usually going to not lose both of them. But one time, high variance. Let's go, dealer. Here comes a $110,000 pot against Ace-10. Come on, using my one time hold. Hey. I ended up winning. Whew. Oh my God. What an incredible turn of events after the stream. And now I have piles. Oh my God. What do I do? Well, we know what happens after I have almost all the chips on the table. It's that the opponent, other opponents want to do uh, a little flip. And when I mean little, I mean it's a $4,000 flip four ways. So a 16K flip, basically. Uh, recorded the whole thing and... You know, just some pure degeneracy, but you know, who's in for some good fun? How can I say no after upswinging over a hundred thousand dollars? And let's fine, let's flip. Happy to gamble. What ends up happening, unfortunately, is that we do um, like ten more of these flips, and I don't win many of them. Uh, not all ten were for four thousand dollars each, but at least five of them were for four thousand dollars each, and I didn't win any of them. So. Uh, down swinging in the flip, sadly. So that's going to reflect in my total during the outro, but at least it was fun. Um, these PLO flips are always nice to gamble. Just wish I was able to win one or two of them. All right. Um, what a weird freaking day. On stream, I was card dead the whole time. Um, I'm here left alone with my chips. And there's a good amount of it. I actually don't know how much it is yet. But what a weird day. I was card dead the entire stream, basically. And I lost. I ended up losing like 30k on stream or a little bit more. And then after the stream, fire. Oh my god. I think I won like almost 100 or something plus with those like three hands. The uh, ace-king hand, the three-deuce hand, and the king's hand. King's hand was like over 100k pot by far. So I don't know how much I, I have for, but I, I ended up flipping and I lost. I ran really bad with all the flips. Uh, we did many, 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 many more flips after the one I showed you. Where we did 4k flips. So I think I lost like 25 to 30k in flips. Not something I'm necessarily very proud of, but I guess it will reflect the total. It was in the game for 300,000, out of the game for whatever number you see on screen. And that is my profit. I know I won at least, which is insane. Uh, how much I won? We're gonna find out uh, when I cash it. But thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, unfortunately, the stream didn't go very well, but after the stream, everything worked out. So um, yeah, one last uh, stream game tomorrow. Uh, the next video you're gonna see. It's gonna, probably gonna be a bigger game than what we just saw today, because it's gonna be a stacked lineup. Nick Airball, Andy Stacks, everyone that buys in deep. So good luck to me, let's get it. And uh, hopefully I win again. See you next time.